fortune. His first prestige. <laughs> Me and uh, not know, gentle mastermind. <laughs> I am in all affected as yourself. Glad that you thus continue your resolve to suck the sweets of sweet philosophy. <laughs> no profit grows where it's no pleasure taken. In brief, sir. Study what you most affect. Grammar uh, Sistrano, oh. well dost thou advise. If be in Dello, thou wert come ashore, to put us in readiness and take a lodging fit to entertain such friends as time and Padua shall beget. some show to welcome us to town. Oh. Sir, 
sister. She got a husband for her sister. Oh, yeah.
stolen your clothes, or you stolen his, or both. Pray, what's the news? Sir, I come hither. Tis no time to jest, and therefore frame your manners to the time. Your fellow Tranio here, to save my life, puts my apparel and countenance on, while I, for my escape, put on his form. In a quarrel, since I came ashore, I killed a man, and fear I was described. Wait you on him, I charge you as becomes, while I make way for hands to save my life. Not a jot of Tronio in your mouth. Tronio is changing to you. The better for him. Would I were so too. Oh, but Sarah, not for my sake, but your master's. I advise you to use your manner discreetly in all kinds of companies. When I am alone, when then I am Tronio, but in all places else, your master, Lucentio. Tronio, let's go. One thing more best that thyself execute is make one among these lures. If thou ask me why, suffice it my reasons are both good and weighty. I don't know where he's going, but when he gets there, I'll be glad. I'm following his father's footsteps, yes. I'm following the dear old dad. Around for a while, I take my leave to see my friends in Kajua, but of all, my best beloved and approved friend. And I chose this is his house. Here, there is room here. Knock, I say. Knock, sir? Who should I knock, sir? Is there anything of you, dear worship? Well, and I say, knock me here. Sounds Nothing comes amiss, so money comes <laughs> yeah. But you're young. 
since we are stuck thus far in, I will continue that I broached in jest. I can, Trucio, help thee to a wife, with wealth enough and young and beauteous and brought up as best becomes a gentlewoman. Her only fault, and that is false enough, is that she is intolerable cursed and shrewd and froward and so beyond all measure that were my state far worse than it is i would not win her for a mine of gold hortensio peace thou knowest not gold's effect <laughs> tell me her father's name and tis enough for i will board her though she chide as loud as thunder when the clouds in autumn crack her father is baptista manola a courteous and affable gentleman her name is Katharina Manola, renowned in Padua for her scolding tongue. I know her father, though I know not her, and he knew my deceased father well. I will not sleep, Hortensio, till I see her. And therefore let me be thus bold with you to give you over at this first encounter. Oh. Unless you will accompany me thither. I pray you, sir, let him go while the humor lasts. Oh, my word. And she knew him as well as I do. She would think scolding would do little good upon him. Terry Petruchio, I must go with you. For in Baptista's keep, my treasure is. Oh. <laughs> he hath the jewel of my life in his hold. His youngest daughter, the beautiful Bianca, <laughs> and her withholds from me and others more suitors to her and rivals in my love, supposing it a thing impossible for those defects I have before rehearsed that ever Katharina shall be with. Therefore, this order hath Baptista taken that none shall have access unto Bianca until Catherine the curse of God. Now <laughs> shall my friend Petruchio do me grace and offer me disguised in sober robes to old Baptista as a schoolmaster, well seen in music to instruct my mistress. But that I may, by this device at least, of leave a measure to make love to her and unsuspected court her by herself. Mm. Yeah. There's no knavery. See, to beguile the old folks. How the young folks lay their heads together. A snatcher looking about you. Who goes there, huh? Oh, peace, Grumio. It is the rival of my love. Petruchio, stand by a while. Oh, very well. I have perused the note. Hark you, I'll have them very fairly bound. All oh, books of love. See that at any hand. And see that you read no other lecture to her. You understand me? What will you read? To her. Whenever I read to her, I'll plead for you. Oh, and you so assured. Uh, Surely it is yourself for standing still. <laughs> Perhaps in more successful words than you. Uh, unless you were a scholar, sir. Uh, uh, this learning, what a thing it is! Oh, no, this woodcock, what an ass it is. Hey, Sarah. Romeo! Mom! God save you, Signor Grimio! Ah, and you are well met, Signor Hortensio! No, where know where I am going? To Baptista Manola! I promise to inquire carefully about a schoolmaster for the fair Bianca, and by good fortune have lighted well on this young man, for, for learning and behavior, fit for her turn, well read in poetry, and other books, good ones. I want you. Ah, it is well. And I have met a gentleman who promised me to help me to another, a fine musician, to instruct our mistress. So shall I no bit be behind in duty to fair Bianca, so beloved of me. Ah, so beloved of me, and that my deed shall prove. And that his bag shall prove. Grimio, <clears throat> tis now no time to vent our love. <sighs> Listen to me, and if you speak me fair, I'll tell you news and different good for either. <laughs> Here is a gentleman who by chance I met <laughs> upon agreement from us to his liking will undertake to woo curse Catherine, yea, and to marry her in her dowry. Ah, oh, that's so sad, so done as well. Hortensio, have you told him all her faults? I know she is an irksome, brawling scold. If that be all, masters, I do no harm. But will you woo this wild? Why came I hither but to that intent? Think you a little din can haunt mine ears? Have I not in my time heard lions roar? Have I not heard the sea puffed up with winds rage like an angry boar and chafed with sweat? Have I not heard great ordnance in the field and heaven's artillery thunder in the skies? Have I not 
in a pinched battle heard, neighing steeds, loud alarums, and trumpets clang. Oh. And you tell me of a woman's tongue that had, gives not half so great a blow to hear as with a chestnut in a farmer's fire. Touch, touch. Fear boys with bugs. Patricio, hawk! This gentleman is happily arrived. My mind presumes for his own good and yours. I promised we would be contributors and bear his charge in weary whatsoever. Ah, and we will, provided that he win her. And when I were assured of a good dinner, gentlemen, God save you, if I may be bold. I ask you, I beseech you, which is the readiest way to the house of Baptista Minola? He that has the two fair daughters, is it he you mean? Even he, beyond Della. Ah, hark you, sir, you mean not her Perhaps too. Perhaps him and her, sir, what have you to do? Better than chides, sir, at any hand, I pray. I love no chiders, sir. Beyond Della, that's away. Oh, well, the guns, Ronio. Sir, a word ere you go. Are you a suitor to the major target? Yea or no? And if I be, sir, is it any offense? Ah, uh, no, if without more words. It will get you hands! Why, sir, are not the streets as free for me as for you? But so is not she! For what reason, I beseech you? Oh, for this the reason, if you'll know, that she is the choice love of Signor Grimio! That she's the chosen of Signor Hortensia! Me, my masters! If you be gentlemen, do me this right. Hear me with patience. Baptista is a noble gentleman to whom my father is not all unknown. Uh, and were his daughter fairer than she is, she may more suit us have. And me, for one, fair lady's daughter had a thousand wars, and well, one more may fair be on the have, and so she shall, who sends you, shall make one, though Paris came in hope to speed alone. Gentlemen, well, talk us all! Sir, give him hand, I know he'll prove a change. Patrizio, to what end are all these words? Sir, let me be so bold as to ask you, did you ever yet see Baptista's daughter? No, sir, but here I do that he hath two. Uh, the one is famous for a scolding tongue, as is the other for beauteous modesty. Sir, sir, the first is for me. Let her go by. Yay! Leave that great labor to Hercules! Sir, let me send you this of me. The youngest daughter whom you hearken for, her father keeps from all access of suitors, and will not promise her to any man, until the elder sister first be wed. The younger then is free, and not before. Oh, if it be so, sir, that you are the man, that she, the elder, set the younger free for our access, whose hap shall be to have her, will not so graceless be to be in great. <laughs> sir, you say well, and well do you conceive. The motion's good, indeed, and be it. Petruchio, I shall be your benvenuto! Oh, 
why. Oh, poor girl, she weeps. For shame, thou wielding of a devilish spirit. Uh, uh, apply thy needle, meddle not with her. Well, what does that wrong her that ne'er did wrong thee? Her oh, silence fluff me, and I'll be revenged. Uh, 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 and thy sight is beyond the wind. What? <laughs> Will you not suffer me? Nay, now I see she is your treasure. She must have a husband. I would dance barefoot on her wedding day, and for your love to her, behaves in hell. No, talk not to me. I will go sit and weep until I can find a occasion for revenge. <laughs> oh, was ever a gentleman thus grieved as I? Oh, oh but who comes? Oh, good morrow, neighbor Baptista! Oh, good morrow, neighbor Greeny, oh, and oh, God save you, gentlemen! And you, good sir! Pray, have you not a daughter called Katharina, fair and virtuous? Uh. <laughs> I have a daughter, sir, called Katharina. <laughs> you are too blunt! Go to it orderly! You wrong me, Signor Grimio. Give me leave. Uh, I am a gentleman of Verona, sir, that hearing of her beauty and her wit, her affability and bashful modesty, her wondrous qualities and mild behavior, am bold to show myself a forward guest within your house to make my eye the witness of that report which I so oft have heard. And for an entrance to my entertainment, I do present you with a man of mine, ah. cunning in music and the mathematics, to instruct her fully in those sciences of which I know she is not ignorant, except of him, or else you do me wrong. His name is Lithio, born in Mantua. Ah. Uh, well, you are welcome, sir, and, and he for your sake. Uh, but for my daughter Catherine, this I know, uh, she is not for your turn, <laughs> the more my grief. Petruchio is my name. Antonio's son. <gasps> Antonio! A man well known throughout all Italy. Oh, I, I, I know him well. You are welcome for his sake. Uh, uh, saving your tail, Petruchio. I pray, let us that our poor petitioner speak to, to express the like kindness myself that have been more beholding to you than any that would like to that hath this young scholar uh, that has long studied in the rhymes, has studied in Greek, Latin, and as for the other, <laughs> as for the other in music and mathematics, his name is Cambio. Pray accept his service. Oh, a thousand thanks, oh, oh. Signor Grimio. Oh. oh, welcome, good Cambio. Uh, but gentle sir, uh, methinks you walk like a stranger. <laughs> May I be so bold as to know the cause of your coming? Pardon me, sir. The boldness is mine own. That being a stranger in this city here, do make myself a suitor to your daughter, to Bianca, fair and virtuous. Nor is your firm resolve in the preferment of the elder sister unknown to me. This favor is all I request, that upon knowledge of my parentage, I may have welcome amongst the rest that woo, and free access and favor as the rest. And for the education of your daughters, I here bestow a simple instrument and this small packet of Greek and Latin books. If you accepted them, sir, then their worth is great. Uh, Lucentio, you say of whence, I pray? Of Pisa son to Vincentio. Oh, uh, a mighty man of Pisa by report. Uh, I, I know him well. Uh, you are welcome, sir. Um, uh, take you the lute uh, and you the set of books. Uh, you'll see your pupils presently. Uh, all are within. Uh, Sirrah, uh, lead these gentlemen to my daughters and tell them both these are their tutors. Bid them use them well. Uh, we will go walking in the orchard and and then to dinner you are passing welcome oh. as I pray you all to think yourselves. Sir Matisse, my business asketh haste and every day I cannot come to you. You knew my father well and in you me left solely heir to all his lands and goods which I have bettered rather than decrease. Then tell me, if I get your daughter's love, what dowry shall I have with her to wife? Well, upon my death, uh, one half of my lands and uh, in possession, 20,000 crowns. Hey! 
for that dowry Isla show her of her widowhood, if she survive me, in all my lands and leases whatsoever. Let specialties be therefore drawn between us, that covenants may be kept on either hand. Aye, when that special thing is well obtained, and that is her love, for that is all in all. But that is nothing, for I am rough, and woo not like a babe. <laughs> well, well, may thou woo, and happy be thy speed, but be thou armed for some unhappy word. Die to the proof, as mountains are for winds that shake not, though they blow perpetually. <laughs> Why then thou canst break her to the lute? Like, no, for she hath broke the lute to me. <laughs> I did but tell her she mistook her frets and bowed her hands to teach her fingering when in the most impatient, devilish spirit. Frets, call you these, quoth she. I'll fume with them. And with that word, she struck me on the head. <laughs> now, by the world, it is a lusty wench. <laughs> Well, I am just such 
young one. No, I say, George, I'm too young for you. Yeah, if you were withered. Because <laughs> it cares. I care not. Nay, here you, Kate, in sooth. You escape. <laughs> not so. I chief you with my cherry. Let me go. No, not a whit. I find you passing gentle. <laughs> <laughs> Just told me you were rough and coy and sullen. And now I find a poor and very liar. <laughs> <laughs> With Without slow in speech. <laughs> as sweet as springtime flowers. Brown! Oh. 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 Brown! Oh. 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 look as gant! Nor bite the lip as angry much as do! Nor hast thou pleasure to be cross in talk. Oh. But thou, with mildness, entertainest thy wooers oh. with gentle conference. Oh. Oh. Look 
is for to your younger daughter. I am your neighbor and was suitor first. And I am the one that loved Bianca more than words can witness or your thoughts can guess. Youngling, thou canst not love as dear as I. Greybeard, thy love doth freeze. But thine doth fry. Skipper, stand back. Tis age that nourishes, but youth in ladies' eyes that nourishes. <laughs> oh, content you gentlemen, I will compound the strife. Tis deeds must win the prize, and whosoever can promise my daughter greater dower shall have my Bianca's love. Uh, uh, okay. Signor Grimio, what can you assure her? Uh, first, as you know, my house within the city is richly furnished with plate and gold, basins and ewers to lave her dainty hands, my hanging doll of tyranny tapestry, in ivory coffers I have stuffed my crown. My self-obstruck in years, I must confess, and if I die tomorrow, this is hers. If whilst I live, she will be only mine. That only came well in. Sir, listen to me. I am my father's heir, and only son. If I may have your daughter to my wife, I'll leave her houses three or four as good within rich peas of walls as any one old Signor Grimio has in Padua. Besides, two thousand ducats by the year of fruit all of which shall be her jointure. Oh, what have I pinched you, Signor Grimio? <laughs> Two thousand ducats by the year of land? Oh, my land amounts to not so much at all. That she shall have, besides an argosy that now is lying in Marcellus Road. What have I showed you with an argosy? Oh, Remio, tis known that my father hath no less than three great argosies, besides two galaxies and twelve tight galleys. These I will assure her, and twice as much, whate'er thou offerest next. Nay, I have offered all I have no more, and that she can have no more than all I have. If you like me, she shall have me and mine. Why then, the maid is mine from all the world, by your firm promise. Remio is out by. Uh, yes, I must, uh, must confess, your offer is the best. Uh, and can your father make these assurances? She is your own, else you must pardon me. If you should die uh, before him, why then where's her dower? That's but a cavil. He is old. I, young. But old young men die as well as old? Well, uh, uh, gentlemen, I am thus resolved, as you know, on Sunday next, my daughter Catherine is to be married. Uh, now, on the Sunday following, if your father can make this assurance, uh, shall Bianca be bride to you, uh, if not, uh, to Signor Grimio. Uh, and so I take my leave, and thank you both. Adieu, good neighbor! Now I fear thee not. Oh, sorry, young gangster. Your father were a fool to give thee all and in his waning age to set foot under thy table. Ha 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 And all the Italian fox is not so kind, my boy. A vengeance on your crafty Withered high. Yet <laughs> <laughs> I faced it with a card of ten. It is in my head to do my master good. I see no reason, but suppose it Lucentio must get himself a father called suppose it Vincentio. That's a wonder. Fathers do commonly get their children, but in this case of wooing, a child shall get a sire if I fail not in my cunning.
forward, sir. Oh. Have you so soon forgot the entertainment her sister Catherine welcomed you with all? <laughs> that a wrangling pedant! Ooh. This is the patroness of heavenly harmony! Ah. Then give me leave to have prerogative and when in music we have spent an hour, an your hour. lecture may have leisure for as much. Preposterous ass that never <laughs> read so far to know the cause my music was ordained. Was it not to refresh the minds of men after his studies or his usual pain? Then give me leave to read philosophy, and while I pause, serve in your harmony. Sira, I will not bear these slaves of thine. Why, gentlemen, oh, oh. you do me double wrong to strive for that which resteth in my choice. Oh, oh, I am no breaching scholar in the schools. I'll not be tied to hours nor pointed times, oh, no, but no. learn my lessons as I please myself. Oh, yes. And to cut off all strife here, sit we down. Oh, oh, mistress. <laughs> 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 Lay you the wiles, his lecture will be done ere you have two. <laughs> You'll leave his lecture when I am in tune. That will be never to your instrument. <laughs> Where left we last? Here, madam. Hic ibits moris, hic es sejaia tulus, hic steterat priami regia celsisinus. Conster them. Hic ibit, as I told you before, Simois, I am Vincentio. Hic est son unto Vincentio, a pisa. Sejaia tulus disguised thus to, to get your love. <clears throat> Hicks Tenerent, and that Lucentio that comes calling. Priami is my man Tranio. Regia, bearing my horse. Celsus that we might beguile the old pantaloon. Madame, <laughs> my instrument's in tune. Let's hear. Bravo! Fly oh. the triple jar. Speak to the whole man in tune again. <sighs>
thought of our son-in-law. Oh, what will be said? Oh, what mockery will it be to, to want the bridegroom when the priest attempts to, to speak the ceremony of rites of marriage? Oh, what says Lucentio? Uh, <clears throat> to the shame of ours. No shame but mine. I must pursue it be forced to give my hand opposed against my heart unto a mad brain Ruth be full of spleen who would in haste and means to wed in leisure. I told you he was a frantic fool hiding his bitter jest and blunt behavior. And to be noted for a merry man, he'll woo a thousand, point the day of marriage, make friends, invite and proclaim the bands, yet never means to wed where he hath wooed. And now must the world point at poor Catherine and say, lo, there's mad Petruchio's wife. If it would please him to come and marry her. Patience, good Catherine, will And Baptista, too. <laughs> Upon my life, Petruchio means but well. Whatever fortune stays him from his birth. Though he be blunt, I know him passing wise. Though he be merry, yet withal, he is honest. But Catherine had never seen him, though. I cannot blame thee now to weep, for such an injury would vex the very saint, let alone a shrew of thy impatient humor. Master! Master! News! And such old news as you never heard of! Is it old as new both? How may that be? Why, is it not news to hear of Petruchio's coming? Oh, is he come? Why, no, sir. What then? He is coming. When will he be here? When he stands where I am and sees there. But what to thine old news? Why, Petruchio comes in a new hat, an old jerkin, a pair of old breeches, thrice turned, a pair of boots that have been candle cases, a one buckled, another laced, an old rusty sword taken out of the town armory, with a broken hilt, shapeless, with two broken points, his horse hipped with an old mothy saddle and stirrups of no kindred. Uh, who comes with him? Oh, sir, his lackey. For all the world's comparison like the horse, a with a linen stock on one leg and cursy boot hose on the other. To some odd humor, fix him to this fashion. Though oftentimes he goes but mean apparel. Oh, uh, well, uh, I'm glad he's come. Uh, Howsoever he comes. Why, sir, he comes not. Did that not say he came? Uh, who? That Petruchio came? I, that Petruchio came! No, sir. I say his horse comes with him on his back. Why, that's all one. Da, 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 not so well apparelled as I wish you were. Were it better I should rush in thus? Oh, it's empty. <laughs> Where is Kate? Where is my lovely bride? How does my father? Settle me thinks you proud. And wherefore gaze this goodly company as if they saw some wondrous monument, some comet or unusual prodigy? Well, sir, as you know, today is your wedding day. And, uh, first, we were sad, thinking it would not come. Now, sadder to see you come so, so ill provided. Uh, why? Why? Doth this have it? A shame to your estate, a, 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 an eyesore to our solemn festival. And tell us what occasion of import has also long detained you and sent you hither so unlike yourself. Mm. Tedious it were to tell, and harsh to hear. <laughs> Sir Faithus, I am come to keep my word. Mm. Oh, where is Kate? I stay too long from her. The morning wears. Tis time we were in church. Oh, no, no, see not your bride. Please on the road. Oh, oh, go to my chambers, put on clothes of mine. Not I, believe me. That's I will visit her. Ah, uh, but not thus I trust you will marry her. Have I done with words? To me she's married, not under my clothes. Could I repair what she would wear in me, as I could change these poor accoutrements? <laughs> were well for Kate, and better for myself. But what a fool I am to chat with you, when I should bid good morrow to my bride, and seal the title with a lovely kiss. 
It may not be. Let me entreat you. It cannot be. Let me entreat you. I'm content. Are you content to stay? I'm content you should entreat me stay, but yet not stay. Entreat me how you can. But now if you love me, stay. <sighs> Rumi on my horse! Hi, sir, <laughs> baby, ready the yokes of need the horses. Yes. Nay then, do what thou canst. I will not go today. No, nor tomorrow. Not till I please myself. The door is open, sir. There lies your way. You may be jogging while your boots are green. As for me, I'll not be gone until I please myself. Tis like you'll prove a jolly surly girl by taking on the first so roundly. <laughs> Yay, content thee. I will be angry. What hast thou to do? I uh, will be quiet. He uh, shall stay at my leisure. I marry some and begins to walk. Gentlemen, forward to the bridal dinner. I see a woman may be made a fool if she had not a spirit to resist. They shall go forward, Kate, thy command. Open the bride, you that attend on her, go to the feast, revel and domineer, carouse full measure to her maidenhead. Be mad and merry, or go hang yourselves. Oh, for my bonnie Kate, she must with me. Nay, look not big, nor stamp, nor stare, nor fret. I will be master of what is mine own. She is my good chattel. She's my house, my household stuff, my field, my barn, my horse, my ox, my ass, my anything. And here she stands, touch her, whoever dare. I'll bring them my action on the proudest he that stops my way in Padua. Rubio, draw forth thy weapon. We are beset with thieves. Rescue thy mistress if thou be a man. Fear not, sweet wench. They shall not touch thee, Kate. I'll buckler thee against a million. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet ones. When they go on quickly, I should die laughing. Of all mad matches, never was the like. What's your opinion of your sister? Of that being mad herself, she's madly mated. <laughs> Junkets at the feast. A senior Lucentio, you shall supply the bridegroom's room and let Bianca take her sister's place. Oh. Shall sweet Bianca practice how to bride it? Ah, oh, she uh, shall, Lucentio. Come, gentlemen, let's away. My master and 
his wife coming, Grubio? I, Curtis, I, and therefore fire, fire, cast on no water. Is she so hot, a shrew, as she's reported? She was, good Curtis, before this frost. But wilt thou make a fire? Or shall I complain on thee to our mistress, whose hand, she being now at hand, thou shalt soon feel thy cold comfort for being slow in thy hot office? I pray oh. thee, good Grubio, tell me what's new in the world! The cold world, Curtis, in every office but thine, and therefore fired! Do my duty and how oh. my duty, for thy master oh. and mistress are almost frozen to death!
Will you give thanks, sweet Kate, or else shall I? What's this, mutton? I! Who brought it? I! Tis burnt, and so is all the meat. What dogs are these? Where is the rascal cook? Address you villains, bring it from the dresser, and serve it thus to me that love it not. There, take it to you. Trench it off, you cups, and all. Heedless heads and unmannered slaves watch the incredible I'll have you with you straight. <laughs>
Master? Master? Yes. I have watched so long that I am dog weary. But at last, I spied an ancient angel coming down the hill. We'll serve the turn. Oh, what is he, beyond other? Master, a mercantent or a pedant? I know not what, but formal in apparel, in gait and countenance, fairly like a father. And what of him, Tradio? If he be credulous and trust my tale, I'll make him glad to see him Vincentio and give assurance to Baptista Manola as if he were the right Vincentio. <laughs> Leave me alone.
Ah, what cheer! Faith as bold as can be. Pluck up thy spirits, look cheerfully upon me. Here, love, thou seest how diligent I am to dress thy knees myself and bring it thee? I am sure as we keep this kind of spirit thanks. What not a word? Nay, then thou lost it not, and all my faith is sorted to no proof. Here, take away this dish. I pray thee, let it stand. Chorus service is repaid with thanks, and so shall mine before you touch the feet. I thank you, sir. Signor Petruccio, God, you are to blame. <laughs> Come, Mr. Saint, I'll bear you company. Eat it up all, Hortensia, if thou loves me. Much good do it unto thy gentle heart. Pace, eat a pace. And now, my honey love, we return unto your father's house and revel it as bravely as the best, with silken coats and caps and golden rings, ruffs and cuffs and farthingales and things, with scars and fans and double change of bravery, with amber bracelets, beads, and all this knavery. What if thou dined? The tailor stays thy leisure to deck thy body with his ruffling treasure. Come, let us see these ornaments. Slay for the gown. What is with you, sir? There is a cap your worship did bespeak. Yeah. This was molded on a porringer, a velvet dish. Fie, fie, tis lewd and filthy. But tis a cockle or a walnut shell, a knack, a toy, a trick, a baby's cap. Away with it. Come, let me have a bigger. I have no bigger. This doth at the time a gentlewoman wear such caps as these. Oh, when you are gentle, you shall have one too, and not till then. <laughs> that will not be in haste. Why, oh, sir, I trust I may have leave to speak, and speak I will. I am no child, no babe. Your betters have endured me say my mind, and if you cannot best you stop your ears, my tongue will tell the anger of my heart, or else my heart concealing it will break. And rather than it shall, I will be free, as I please, even to the uttermost in words. It is a paltry cap, a custard coffin, a bauble, a silken pie. I love thee well, and that thou likest it not. Love thee or love me not. I like the cap. I will have or I will have none. The gown, why I? Come, Taylor, let us see. Oh, mercy God, what masking stuff is here? Was this a sleeve? <laughs> what up and down, carved like an apple tart? Yeah. Here's a snip, snip, and cut. To a censor in a barber's shop. <laughs> oh, what a devil's name Taylor calls them is. I see she's like to have another cap worked out. Your worship bids me make it orderly and well according to the fashion and the time. That and the deed. <laughs> but if you be remembered, I did not bid you more as to the time. I'll oh, none of it. Hence, make your best of it. And I never saw a better fashion gown, more pleased, more pleasing, nor more commendable. Hey, like you mean to make a puppet of me? Why, true, he means to make a puppet. Sleeves. <laughs> the sleeves are curiously cut. Ah! 
Like to be 
Jane was Setio's wife. I pray that God she may with all my heart. <laughs> Dally not with God. Get me gone. Shall I lead the way? <laughs> I follow you. <coughs> But they may chance immediate hope. 
therefore leave us. Nay, faith, I'll see the church of your back. Then come back to my masters as soon as I can. <laughs> I marvel why Gabriel comes up all this while! Sir, here's the door. This is your sentinel's house. My father's bears more toward the marketplace. Never must stop, and here I am, sir. Oh, you cannot but choose to drink before you go. I think I shall command your welcome here, and I all likely look some cheer is toward. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
as you draw your bow. You are welcome all. She hath prevented me. Here's an Adronia, this bird you aimed at, though you hit her not. Therefore, I help to all that shot and missed. Ah. Ah. Governor, 
the blockside beauty of Frosty Bites the Beast can found my favorite world and shake your butt and in no sense it's being amiable. The woman moved just like a fountain troubled, muddy, conceiving, thick, breasted beauty. And why do so none so dry or thirsty will deign to sip or touch one drop of it? Thy husband is thy lord, thy life, thy king, thy governor, one that cares for thee and for thy maintenance commits his body to painful labor, both by sea and land, to watch the nightly storms, the day in cold, whilst thou liest warm at home, secure and safe. I crave no other tribute at thy hands than love, fair looks, and true obedience. But too little payment for so great a debt. Such duty as a subject knows a prince, if it's to a woman, always to her husband. And when she is forward, peevish, sullen, sour, and not obedient to his honest will, what is she but a foul contending rebel and a graceless traitor to her loving lord? I am ashamed that women are so simple to offer war when they should kneel for peace, or seek for rule, supremacy, and sway when they are bound to serve, love, and obey. And why are our bodies soft? Oh, I'm apt to toil and trouble in the world, but that our soft conditions and our hearts may well agree with our external parts. Come, come, you froward and unable worms. My mind has been as big as one of yours. My heart is great. My reason happily more to bandy word for word and crap for crap. But now I see our lances are but strong, our strength as weak, our weakness past compare, but seeming to be most which we indeed least are. Well, bail your stomach, for it is no proof. And place your hands below your husband's foot. In token of which duty, if he please, my hand is ready, <coughs> may do him ease. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a wench. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you want to kiss me, Katie? <laughs> <laughs> Her rights are just the same as mine.